Joining us right now is First American Chief Economist Mark Fleming. And Mark, it is great to have you this morning. Thank you. So we, we're talking about the economy, broadly speaking, and you just said a lot of metrics look good. And yet here we are in the morning looking at retail sales under pressure, coal stock down 10 percent, a number of others uh, closing stores like Dress Barn. Is there a bifurcation going on in this economy? Is the consumer a weak spot? Um, I don't think so. And, and broadly speaking, the consumer is consuming as much as they ever had before. The question is how they consume it. And I think there is definitely in the retail sector a shift of winners and losers in terms of uh, our consumption patterns. The Amazons of the world are taking more and more consumption away from the traditional big box retailers in particular. So housing, we're waiting on the existing home sales. Right. Housing, uh, what does it look like to you? And give us your assessment of the economy right now. Well, consensus estimate for housing is up. Home sales are up. Uh, part of that is because the economy is strong. And most specifically within the economy, growing uh, wage, wage is growing, which means more household income. You get the rate benefit, which is amazing in terms of purchasing power for housing. And so we see a lot of demand out there because rates are low and incomes are up. Talk more about that because mortgage rates have come down, especially in the last couple months. And we saw existing home sales and new home sales really get hit hard in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. after the Fed raised rates for the fourth mm -hmm. time this year. Um, and since then, they've been on pause. Uh, we've had a little bit of a hiccup in the market here, um, and rates have come down with this trade tension. Um, are we out of the woods in the housing market? The consumer's feeling good? Uh, maybe not out of the woods, but you have to remember in the housing market, existing home sales is the vast majority of homes that come to market for sale. That means there's a consumer already in the home mm -hmm. with a low mortgage rate. When rates rose, there's a rate lock-in effect. It will cost me more to you know, move. And so we see tenure rising, we saw people staying put. What's happening now this spring is because rates have come back down almost to those historic lows, that rate lock-in effect's not really there, and so people are jumping in and, and moving. How is new home construction coming along? My family's in the real estate business, and my dad always used to say, if you want to know how the economy's doing, look at how many new rooftops are going up. How, how's that coming along? Uh, we're definitely underbuilding. We have underbuilt for the last decade since the end of the recession to the tunes of millions of homes. So the bigger, broader problem in the housing market today isn't what's happening in terms of sales today or tomorrow. It's that, you know, relative to the number of households out there, there's a huge shortage of housing in the United States, which means for home builders, it's ultimately a good thing because how do you increase the housing stock by building more we, homes? We see that in California. We do uh, polling showing us the number one issue in the state of California is cost of housing for young families because existing families that have been longtime California residents and bought in a long time ago know that their kids cannot buy a home in California. And so they're separating to go to places like Arizona, Texas, where these same homes cost half the price. And where does the building happen? In Arizona, right. in Texas, in Atlanta, not in places like California. So are you expecting prices to come to, to stay? You, you think pri home prices will go up? All of this demand that's coming into the market today, a relatively housing stock shortage. We've seen prices slow down, but I expect in the next couple of months, keep in mind, house price indices lag significantly. We just saw February last month. So when we see the March and April home price uh, indices, they might actually show a, an increase or acceleration in growth again. I, one, of, yeah. one of the problems is that people are asking too much for their homes, that because of where interest rates are and incomes in this country, home prices in your major metropolitan areas are all overpriced, and people right. who have inventory on the market or trying to sell their homes are living in, I don't know, 2005, <laughs> and they think that, and the, the prices that they're asking are absurd. Is that part of the problem? Well, you have to remember that the price is really often a function of the interest rate. And so prices go up because interest rates go down. My monthly cost of buying that million dollar home is actually relatively low. When we look at what we call our real house prices, um, housing is significantly less of, um, expensive today than it was even in the year 2000, 18 years ago. Mm. Not because the nominal level isn't higher. It's higher. Million dollars, million five in many markets. But an interest rate of 4% means my monthly payment to be able to buy that home is relatively low. So I love your bullish outlook on the economy, but what <laughs> about trade and tariffs? Do you think that cuts into growth? Well, 75 years of economic research shows that, you know, higher tariffs are bad for the global economy. And so, you know, I, I think that definitely is uh, something the OECD actually just came out today and, and reduced their global growth estimates. I feel like there's a butt coming. But, uh, <laughs> but is the housing market resilient enough to handle it? Possibly so.
possibly. You just took away a huge. <laughs> I'm sorry, the government just took away a huge tax incentive for buying a house. That's one of the things that's whether it's the reduction in the mortgage, the um, the lowering of the mortgage interest rate deduction, and then also the um, cap on salt deductions. Mm -hmm. is we see we have a really hard time finding evidence in the data of meaningful impact of that sort of broadly macro. Now, when we focus on certain markets, and I know around here in New York, places in Miami, parts of Southern California, there's definitely an but impact there. But that's because there. the new housing growth is not in, it's not on the coast, right? right? It's more in other states that aren't affected by this. We're talking about $6 million right. homes in Greenwich right. or in Newport right. Beach. You know, that's, that's not going to move my macroeconomic right. number needle. Right. So yeah. you, you think things, stay, can we have a 3% year? 3% for? 3% economic growth. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. You know what economists say on the one hand and on the other. I'm yeah. trying to think through all the possible things that could go wrong. <laughs> Mark, thank you. Thank you. Mark Fleming joining us there.